they fail to close the gap to six points to Arsenal ahead of the match where they face each other at the Emirates on Sunday. And of course, Casemiro picking up another yellow card in the match tonight means he will now miss what could potentially be a crucial game at the Emirates on Sunday. As for Crystal Palace, they picked up a point tonight. They couldn't go any further in the table, so they remain in 12th place now on 23 points. Will, was that a moment of absolute magic that rescued a really precious point for Palace? Uh, I think it was, yeah. We've been going through a difficult period of late um, and sometimes you need a bit of magic like that from, from those sorts of players. We've got plenty of it in the team, Elise, Wilf, Ebbs, we've got, we've got individual talent, so I think it was a good point in the end. Say magic, Wilf, how good was it? Um, it was amazing. Obviously, we know we've got the talent in the team and one thing that we've, the gaffers, cracked on about is just uh, um, contesting the games and the talent just shows through in the end that like today managed to get a point. You think that's what you added tonight, the grit, the determination, never giving up, no matter how deep into injury time? Yeah, I think, I think that's what the team needs. That's, that was the difference today, just never say die attitude and Every 50-50 every going in it, 100%. And obviously we got what we deserved. We didn't even want it at the end. Do you think you're through then? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid Aaron caught up with you. Any other player, as I'm running through, I look back, I had a little look back and I thought, oh my God, it's Aaron. He's the only one that can do the scoop tackle. So yeah, it was a great tackle. I can't, I can't say anything about it. Maybe that's the mark of the evening. He's disappointed with the point. Yeah, in the end, it's, it's fine margins, isn't it? Um, but like Will said, we know we've got the talent in the squad, but of late it's doing the basics and winning your duels and contesting, and I think we did a lot of that tonight, and sometimes you get the rub the green and one all will take it. But a point against the most informed team in the Premier League, what else does it give you more than the actual point itself? Uh, hopefully a bit of momentum and belief, because like you said, of late they're bang on form. Um, their managers changed their fortunes around uh, this season and they're a top, top team. So to go toe to toe with them and not be gutted with a point, but deserved a point in the end is a, is a good, good feeling. Do you need to build on this, Wilf, particularly as well at home? Yeah, 100%. I think that performance today, the fans deserved that. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing with the lads, really. Like, we all worked so hard today. Obviously, we're happy with the point and it just gives us confidence going into the next games. Also, as well, you set up the start of the season very well. You picked up a lot of points. You've got to be careful you don't get reeled back into the pack. Yeah, it's about consistency. Um, you can't get ahead of yourself. And I think on occasions this season, we've not been complacent, but we've gone into games thinking we've got a bit of a right to, to win uh, and not done the basics right. And I think you see tonight, when you do the basics right, you've got the talent that will shine through. So hopefully that's a, a mark for future, for future games. Great stuff. Well done, guys. Cheers, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Crystal Palace needed a point tonight to avoid them starting to look over their shoulder, as it was just pointed out in the interview there. Four losses in their last five Premier League matches was the run they were on heading into the game tonight, Clinton. It was that sensational free kick that won them the point in the end. And when you hear the way the players were speaking at the end there, they, they almost seemed disappointed they didn't come away with a winner. Yeah, I think they're disappointed they didn't come away with a winner because it's a chance at the end with Wilfred Zaha and me and Michael were talking about it. Michael made a great point. He should have gone across Wan-Bissaka because you know what Aaron wan is like. In those situations, he's one of the best for me in the Premier League because he'll get back and the timing of his tackle was superb but Palace needed that they've been struggling to score goals and you look at the attacking players that they have they should be scoring more goals but I think Matt Holland alluded to it they are missing a number nine who can put the ball in the net they've got a lot of creative players but that will give, give them confidence moving forward because their fixture list coming up is really tough yeah as for Manchester United they'd look pretty comfortable for the majority of the match until a bit of a spell in that second half and, and particularly right at the end of the game Michael so let's take a look at Bruno Fernandes goal which came in the first half at this point it did feel as though Manchester United were, were fully deserving of the lead how did they create this goal yeah, it took them a while in the first half to, uh, to to get that opener, but I think based on the half-time that we saw, they were probably worthy of a 1-0 lead. Um, we mentioned Veghorst in the first half and this run that he made uh, took both defenders with him. It was a great bit of run, just leaves that 
space for Fernandez, and he takes a touch. He does well because he can panic. He could hit it first time. He realises he's, he's got time, and he takes his touch and, and plants it in the back of the net, which changes Ten Hag's team talk uh, at half-time. Um, and I just felt that as soon as Crystal Palace scored the equaliser, Manchester United showed that they, they had other gears. They yeah. could have gone on. And we spoke as well, Jules, you mentioned the stat that Manchester United have not conceded any points from a winning position. And you could see that with his substitutes in the second half, started bringing off a few attacking players, mm -hmm. bringing on defensive midfield players, tried to really shore it up as opposed to, to going for the second goal. But obviously that backfired in the end. Yeah, and then the equaliser came in stoppage time. Crystal Palace didn't have a great deal of chances throughout the match, but they made this one count. Yeah, Man United restricted them, but this was a fantastic free kick. I literally said, what's he doing? Because he pulled it in the <laughs> box because I didn't think he could score from there, but he proved me wrong. It's a fantastic free. Had to be something good to beat David De Gea this evening. Fantastic form, but the wall's small. Me and Michael were talking about that is a, wall, a small wall, but you've got to give credit to Elisa. Even if they had a big wall, I think the, the accuracy and the way it dips and hits the crossbar, it's a fantastic free Do you mean in terms of the height of the players yes. in the wall? Yes, yeah, small wall and nobody lying underneath it, yeah. which we've seen a lot of time as well. The only thing, and people that watch this show would, would have heard me saying it before, <laughs> and I'll say it again, I don't for the life of me know why teams put their wall on that side of the goal. It's the short way to goal where yeah. he's going. You see De Gea, as yeah. the ball's going, he's he's looking around the, the wall. So you he's think the wall... two-thirds of the goal up there. So where you think the wall should move? If the move, wall goes on the other side, other side. De Gea stay, goes two yards to it's the a, left... It's a harder he's free got a, kick. It's a harder free yeah. kick, and it's a longer way to go to that far top corner as it is to the near top. You've got lots more time as a goalkeeper. I'm... It's a short route. You've got no-one lying there. You've got a tiny wall... And you've got De Gea peering round it, giving two thirds of the goal up. I've never. I just think you make I've, it. I've never heard that, Mike. But Mike. I'm going to start using to that. It, That's so a good. He makes sense, though. It is I right because be if you're moving it there and De Gea is here, it's a harder free kick look to get him. over. Look at him. He's yeah, look at him. And he's given away two thirds no, of the goal. No, you're right. You are right. And he's making it a short, a shorter distance from get ball there. to goal by letting him go for that near corner. And I'm not blaming De. Every every team seems to do it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Obviously, I'm wrong, but I just can't for the know. life of me. I've I don't know if you are wrong. I'm going to get that out there. When you're done, when I'm going to get that out there. <laughs> when you're done with this TV luck, maybe you could go into set I'm sweating coaching. now. I'm not <laughs> angry about it because it happens all the time. I just don't know why. It's I'm hot in there, mate. Don't worry. You're not sweating because you're angry. Oh. It's hot. Well, we, anyway. talked, we talked about the, the chances that Crystal Palace had late on, that Wilfred Zaha one, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But Casemiro has this ridiculously good chance to get a winner for Manchester United, which would have put them to within six points of Arsenal at the top of the table. How, how does he miss this? What goes wrong? He's still dreaming of uh, <laughs> or thinking about missing the Arsenal game, yeah. I'm sure, with, those, with that booking. Um, he's not sure, I think, whether to go with his head. You look here, he sort of dips his head as if to... And he just doesn't... He's just not expecting it. That's the bottom line. He thinks someone in front of him is going to get a nick. And... Uh, I'm pretty sure if that was a centre forward, he'd have that sort of anticipation and, and knock it into an empty net, but just wasn't there. You've missed a few like that, Clinton, haven't you? No, no. chance. <laughs> Absolutely no Sorry. chance. If it George. was him, he would. If it was, if it was me, yeah, Michael yeah. Royce even said it. We were when rubbish. We were rubbish. From, yeah, from two, two yards out. Two yards out, that was the best. <laughs> <laughs> I knew well, I was waiting for that, Jules. What a chance that was. Let's yeah. take a look at the one that Wilfred Zaha had. Yeah. With it, To be honest, more than anything, this is Aaron Wambasaka, who we all think had a, had a pretty good 90 oh, minutes yeah. tonight overall. But this challenge late on, Wilfred Zaha is through on goal. If he doesn't put this tackle in, this is a certain goal, isn't it? His recovery is brilliant. Look, Aaron Wambasaka, he's behind, but Wilf's got a goal across him that way. Instead, he takes it to the left. And he just said in his interview, he looked behind and thought it's Azza, well, which is Wambasaka, and he thinks, I'm not getting there because he can... Ta the time... He loves that. Aaron Wambasaka game, he loves the tackling like that. If Wilf goes across the defender, Aaron Wambasaka's got a problem then and he's in on goal. But when he takes it that way, it's a brilliant tackle. And I thought Wambasaka has been outstanding. And credit to him because he got a lot of stick. Everyone ridiculed him, said he wasn't good enough. Last five games, I think he's been outstanding for Man United. Yeah, he's come in when Dallow's been injured. Dallow picked up an injury during the World Cup, so Aaron wambasaka has been playing probably more than he, he may have. But when you go back to your old club like he did tonight, does it just give you that little bit of extra that you want to put in an even better performance? I think it does, yeah. And I think when the team sheets came out and 
Wilfred Zaha saw that that Wambazaka was going to be marking him in that game, he would have been thinking, oh, no, because no player wants to play against the likes of Wambazaka. His problem, obviously, yeah. is on the ball, is going forward, but he's improving that all the time as well. But as Clinton says, that was Wambazaka to a T. Mm. That is the best part of his game, that, that late uh, lunging tackle where he almost sweeps his leg around. And, uh, and we could see it coming. And Clinton's right, if he takes his first touch across him, he takes wan out the game straight away. He doesn't give him that chance to uh, to make a last-ditch tackle. But he played well. And, uh, and in fact, Zaha, after only... Well, he was during the first yeah. half, he switched sides. Yeah. He was getting no joy out of him. And not many wingers do get uh, joy out of a wan But as I say, from Manchester United's point of view, you need your full-backs to be brilliant at the back, but yeah. going forward as well. And that's slightly where he lacks. We saw a moment ago that the opportunity that Casemiro had to win the game for Manchester United in the end... Scoring goals isn't the main part of his game. Being in that midfield, he has been absolutely crucial to everything Manchester United have done well, particularly since the, the return after the World Cup. He picks up a booking, yeah. and I think all Arsenal fans around the world will have been jumping for joy because it means he misses the game against Arsenal at the weekend. But Man United fans will be thinking... Why? Why did this have to happen? Yeah, I'm gutted because I want you want to see the best players playing in that because that's going to be a hell of a game. I think he doesn't know what's behind. He doesn't have to make that tackle. I think he's thinking, we've lost the ball. It's Wilfred Zaha. He's one on one with me. He goes past me. But Varane's behind him. And I feel, still think Zaha's got a lot to do but it's instinct in that position. And that's what mm -hmm. Casemiro does. It's an instinct. That's what he does. He, he broke up loads of play today. I thought he was outstanding again. And he, he just lunges. And, he, yeah, he deserves that yellow card. But I'm absolutely gutted. And you can see his manager's gutted, thinking maybe I should have took him off early. But you can't take him off early. The game's 1-0. Still in the knife edge there. You can't take him off. So I think he's just got to be more sensible next time he makes that tackle. You can see the reaction from Eric Ten Hag. You can see the reaction from Casemiro, who knows exactly what it means. And I think Bruno Fernandes is one of the first players to go over to him after that as well. And you can see them almost having a conversation yeah. about it. Um, how much of a loss will he be in that Arsenal game? Yeah, massive loss. I mean, you get away without Casemiro in, in certain games. If they were playing at home to somebody next, you know, team outside the top four or five, then, you know, it's, it's not so bad. But when you play against the big boys, when you play against the best teams, you have to have absolutely everybody, all your best players, fit and ready to go. And that is a massive blow. They all knew it. He shrugged his shoulders as if to say, I couldn't do anything. But he could have. I think Clinton's right. He could have. I don't think it was... You know, Varane was behind him. It wasn't an absolute last-ditch uh, challenge. Uh, and Ten Hag, you saw his reaction as well. So, yeah, that's, that's one of the... I mean... It was a bit of blow. That, that last 10 minutes was a nightmare for yeah. them. Yeah. They lose yeah. one of the best players for a big game and they concede a goal, lose two points. Um, and Clinton's right, you can't bring him off. What, at 1-0, it goes to show they went and equalised. You just you can't risk bringing him off. So, yeah, a disaster 10 minutes for Manchester United. OK, let's get some reaction now from the Manchester United camp. Here's Bruno Fernandes. 